What's up guys? Uh, today we are not in the basement. Bert's not here, Toolbox isn't here, it's just me here. Uh, so we're actually in the shop today and I figured I would show you guys a little something because it's something that I'm working with right now. Um, so we have a, an Empire Sniper here that had a little bit of a barrel leak, which typically is going to be either a cup seal or a valve o-ring problem. Um, and in this case, technically it's kind of a cup seal problem. So I doubt I'm gonna be able to pick it up on camera, but this is the valve out of this particular Empire Sniper. And what we have is it looks like uh, some particles got in to the air system, whether it be dirt or whatever. Here at the field, uh, we're actually in a cave with a sand floor and everything, uh, at least on the playing field. So it's, it's fairly common to get some debris into your marker, uh, especially if you're not cleaning it very often. So what has happened is the face of the valve here, the ceiling face where the cup seal presses against is actually a little bit damaged, okay? Now, normally a lot of people would tell you, well, you're gonna need to replace your valve, uh, but you don't necessarily have to. So what we're gonna do is what's called lapping, okay? So essentially what we're gonna do is right here, I have a little piece of 400 grit sandpaper, I have a piece of 600 grit sandpaper, and I have a piece of 1500 grit sandpaper. So. Essentially what we're going to be doing is taking this valve and the surface that we're trying to recondition, or in this case, the face of this valve where it seals, is going to go extremely perpendicular to this and stay perfectly straight as much as we possibly can. And what we're going to do is just move in slow circles, ideally in figure eights, but it's a little harder to keep that straight. Um, but we'll do it in circles for this time. And you can see I've got a little bit of oil on my sandpaper here. So technically this is gonna be a wet sand. Uh, it helps to get a little bit finer sand on there. Okay, so we're just gonna very slowly take a little tiny bit of material off and then go up in grit to make this a good, uh, a nice surface finish, okay? So I don't know, you guys probably, let me see if I can scoot you back so you can see this a little bit. Okay, you can kinda see there. So first things first, you wanna have a nice, clear, very flat space to be working on, okay? You want a very flat, very hard space. Um, if you happen to have a surface plate or a piece of glass around, that's ideal, okay? So we're using a piece of glass, the countertop here. We're gonna take this valve and we're gonna make sure to seat it very flat and very slowly and carefully, making sure to keep, making sure to keep this 100% upright at all times. We're gonna very lightly sand this, almost no pressure at all. We're gonna very lightly sand, and it'll drag real hard at first, but you'll eventually see it kind of pick up. Okay, and then we're gonna check it. So obviously if we're doing this, we have found that there is damage on this surface. So we're looking for that damage. Uh, it's probably about halfway gone on this one. Okay, now I did do a little bit of sanding on this before I decided to make a video, but we're gonna go ahead and keep sanding this down. Now the biggest reason you wanna make 100% sure that this is perpendicular to your work surface, or parallel to your work surface, I guess, perpendicular. Technically perpendicular to your work surface. I guess the face of it would be parallel, but anyway. Um, is that if you get off kilter, you're going to start essentially rounding off that face, which gives you less and less surface to actually seal on for the cup seal. Um, now, a lot of the times, if this damage has happened, you want to make sure to inspect the cup seal for any damage, any particles that are embedded in the cup seal. Um, every once in a while, you'll get lucky if you do have particles embedded in the cup seal and you can clean them out, and because of the kind of gummy material that the cup seal is made of, it'll go ahead and reseal. Uh, let's see how this one goes. There we go, so we're getting really, really close. Uh, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is you can kinda see, it probably won't focus, there we go. You can see we're definitely making a different surface finish here and leveling everything back out. I do still have the tiniest bit of damage right here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pause this. We'll run through the other two grits and I'll show you the end result and we'll see if it seals up. All right, guys. So just got finished with 400 grit real quick. 
Um, the biggest thing I wanted to talk about here real quick is the reason that I started with 400 uh, and not just doing like a 600 or a 1500 finish real quick is uh, this is a steel valve. So if you're working with like an old WGP brass valve, which is a lot easier to damage if you get stuff into it, consider the metal that you're working with. Okay, so brass is a lot softer metal than steel is. So on this one, we started with a 400 grit on a brass valve. You might want to go ahead and start with a 600. Or if it's just a light scratch, it's probably not giving you trouble. But if it's just a light scratch, you can probably just start, you know, 600, 1500, 800, whatever you have around. So for now, we've gotten all the damage off of the cup seal taken care of. That'll focus. Nope, not going to. But anyway, this is really pretty. Um, so we have gone to 600, added a drop of oil there. Um, it's very important to keep your lubrication up uh, in pretty much everything in life. Whether it's tech lube, now let's not go into that. Um, it's important, lubrication's important. Just keep it in mind, kids. So the other big thing here is you can kind of see I'm grabbing and pushing on the very, very bottom, just as low as I possibly can on this thing. That keeps all of my force as far, as far down as possible on the valve, which makes it a little easier to keep it from tipping over on me, okay? Uh, which is, you know, makes, if you're gripping up high, your force is applied up here, it's a lot easier to cockeye that valve, okay? So all we've really done is raise that surface finish up to about 600. Now we're gonna take our 1500, and this is a very well-worn piece of 1500. And we're gonna do one last spin here on this just to give it a really nice finish for our cup seal to seal on. All right. So again, camera's probably not going to focus, but if you guys could see, this has a really nice little shine to it now. Oh, there we go. Nice little shine to it. Nice clean finish. I'm going to go ahead and plug this all back together. Uh, we'll gas it up and hopefully it doesn't leak. All right. So we have this one all back together. It's just your standard, you know, bog standard Empire Sniper. Uh, run this parabolic barrel on it and this is actually for one of my refs here so what we're looking for is a barrel leak and we're good so this is just one of those ways that whether it's your stuff or you know in this case an employee's stuff or you know, uh, a friend's, a buddy's, whatever it happens to be, this is something that you might look into so that you can save yourself a little bit of time, a little bit of money. Um, no parts cost. So we just, you know, saved a gun without having to replace anything. All it took is literally just a little bit of time, a little bit of sandpaper, a couple drops of oil. Um, like I said, most of the time, this is, this is not necessarily going to save you all of the time, okay? A lot of the times, you're going to have to replace the cup seal. And I wouldn't doubt that this one, if we put a few rounds through it, that cup seal is probably going to bounce around a little bit, and the divots and where the debris dug into the cup seal is probably going to cause a little hairline leak. Uh, but for right now, she's sealed up. It'll get him going, and then if he wants to replace the cup seal, we can go that way. But in the meantime, we've saved the valve without costing ourselves any money. So... There you go, guys. Uh, I think I'll go ahead and start shooting some more stuff there at the house. Got a lot of fun projects going on, a lot of stuff I've been working on. Uh, we'll shoot you some more videos, and uh, we'll see you next time, guys. Thanks.